thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming uh, for the last session uh, before drinks. Right. So, so today we're going to talk about the GPU and the Sparks. Um, uh, going to be a lot of fun. So this is us, uh, some engineer from IBM. Because uh, deep learning is so hard, so we also modify a little bit. Uh, both of us also have a little bit of deep learning experience. Uh, the first uh, uh, deep learning or artificial intelligence project I did was 20 years ago. Uh, I created a, a distributed, distributed artificial intelligence system on a Spark cluster. Of course, it's not Apache Spark. Uh, it's a Sun Microsystems Spark cluster. So, so over there, uh, I, I have this um, you know, parallel compiler for Perlog. And the Perlog is a very famous um, machine learning artificial intelligence language. Uh, over there, uh, we de uh, decompose all the parallelizable component. And then I wrote a scheduler and I set dispatch the task to uh, a cluster of uh, some workstation. So this is what I did, a uh, hundred, uh, hundred of them, some workstation, pretty cool. How about you? Yeah. Uh, I'm Jun Feng. So my initial AI project is coming from the university project. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, people here ever hear the RoboCup, for which is kind of worldwide uh, competition, try to build a robot can play the real soccer game with the human. So that's kind of the uh, ambitious at that time. That was uh, like 10 years ago. And I still remember like we spent like a day and night try to train the robot to learn some very basic thing to injection, to interception the ball, <laughs> or the try to kick her and how to pass in the ball. That was very interesting. And uh, we did very good actually. At last we win like uh, the 2002 second place in the worldwide competition. But well, why you didn't uh, work on uh, artificial intelligence after graduation? <laughs> OK, that's a good question. I think after graduate, there's no so much job in that area in the market. <laughs> that's probably the major reason. But it's uh, fine. <laughs> well, things have changed. Right now, artificial intelligence, deep learning, very cool. Uh, you wouldn't find, uh, find a problem you know, looking for a job. <laughs> yep. OK, so. Um, so today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, GPU and the Spark. Um, uh, what's the motivation uh, for the marriage between Spark and the GPU? Um, and then uh, we're going to talk about uh, the challenges uh, of uh, production deployment. Uh, this is uh, based on our experience uh, of working with a customer uh, and also uh, with uh, IBM internal team, uh, people working on cognitive computing. Uh, we have some customers using hundreds or thousands of GPU servers. Uh, we're helping them to move their GPU application to Spark. And we're going to talk about the challenges, and then later on we're going to talk about uh, some of the solutions uh, we created. And uh, we're going to show a demo, uh, Jinfen is going to show a demo. And uh, the last, uh, if we have time, we're going to show a little bit of our, our product offering. Why? Why? Uh, Spark and the GPU together. Uh, before I go ahead, maybe I just want to do a quick uh, survey. Uh, how, my how many of you guys using GPU right now? Okay, quite a few. How many of them are you uh, using GPU and Spark together? A few of them. For sure, I'm going to talk to you guys later on. And uh, this is also the reason we come here. So, so there are tremendous uh, synergy between the two. Uh, if uh, you look at from right to li left, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, existing GPU applications. Uh, for example, in the deep learning domain, there's uh, Google's TensorFlow, uh, there's Cafe, and then there are also, for example, in financial service area, uh, a lot of uh, big financial service uh, customers using GPU to accelerate their uh, risk calculation, market simulation, and the random number generation. And this, those are just two examples. There are many other areas as well. For example, life science, uh, going and gas, uh, um, CAEs, uh, CAD design. So over there, uh, people using GPU to accelerate compute intensive workload. But they're also facing challenge that they need to run against a much bigger data set and a much bigger model that cannot be run uh, or 
finished by one single GPU or single machine. So that's why uh, Spark could play a very significant role over there. Uh, Spark could help to manage big data, uh, do the data processing, do the data distribution, and, and then uh, manage the arbitration uh, using multiple GPU cards to solve a bigger problem. On the other hand, I, I think there are several talks uh, today. I'll talk about uh, Spark already become a CPU intensive problem. Uh, Spark is no longer I.O. bound. Right now, Spark is a CPU bound. So that means um, technology like GPU could help Spark tremendously to accelerate the, the CPU intensive uh, workload. Uh, for example, for graph and analytics, and also for uh, machine learning libraries. So uh, there are different ways uh, of uh, integrating Spark and the GPU. Um, I, I'm going to talk about the three tracks. Uh, actually, IBM active all in all the three tracks. Uh, the first one uh, is to use the GPU to accelerate some standard Spark libraries and also operations without changing the interface and the program model. Uh, over there, uh, for example, uh, in uh, MLLib, um, IBM team have uh, created uh, the CUDA version of some of the algorithm, for example, the logistic regression and the ARS. Um, I, I won't go into detail, uh, but uh, I provide a link. Uh, we, IBM have already open source the project, and also uh, their fantastic talk by my colleagues uh, at NVIDIA uh, GPU Technology Conference. Uh, over there, they talk about the approach and also uh, take a specific example how to use the GPU to accelerate uh, uh, ALS, for example. Uh, the second approach um, is, uh, is a more general approach uh, comparing with the first one, because first one, uh, it works only for some well-known standard libraries and uh, operations. The second approach actually is to use a more generic uh, compiler approach. Um, over there, um, uh, the IBM team uh, used uh, the latest the Java, 8, uh, Java 8 paradigm to, to identify the parallelizable module and then generate uh, CUDA code and using JET compiler and then send it to uh, the GPU for execution to, uh, accelerate, to accelerate a generic Spark and Scala and the Java code. So there is another talk, public talk available as well. So if you're interested, in, uh, please have a look. Uh, the third one is about the integration. Integrate, uh, to integrate the existing uh, GPU uh, application uh, that is used by customer, um, you know, by the deep learning community, and then use a Spark to enable them to run a distributed environment and also manage big data. And this is, uh, will be the focus for today. Um, we, we're going to talk about some of the production challenges, right? how, to, how to, to run the Spark on GPU in a production-like environment. There are a lot of challenges. Uh, this is uh, not trivial. Uh, the first of all, you need to identify which part is a G GPU operation and which part is a CPU operation within the Spark deck execution tray. The second lay, um, you need to do the data preparation. I need to make sure uh, you use a proper size of a partition uh, to distribute the data. Uh, make sure the data can fit into GPU memory. And uh, if you integrate with existing GPU application, you also need to transfer data from, uh, from a Spark JVM to uh, Python and also to the GPU memory. And uh, one of the important challenges faced by a lot of uh, customers uh, is, um, is low utilization of uh, CPU and the GPU resources. So we cannot ass assume this is a homogene uh, homogeneous environment. Right? You're going to have a GPU machine. Uh, you're going to have uh, CPU-only machines. And also, most importantly, GPU is not cheap. Right? If you go to uh, all the different um, cloud provider. If you go to Dell, um, uh, try to purchase a machine, uh, you quite often you will find out that the GPU machine will the price for GPU machine the instance will be multiple times higher than the standard CPU instance. That's why 
make a good use of uh, both GPU and CPU uh, is the key to get the ROI. And then when you have this mixed workload together running in, in this heterogeneous environment, uh, you also need to think about uh, to make sure now the overload system, uh, either for GPU or GPU, CPU or GPU, make sure there's no long tail and you need to think about the failover. What if uh, uh, GPU has a problem, have an ECC error, whether uh, you could use a CPU to, to be the, the backup to finish the com com uh, computation so that you can guarantee the application SRA. The last one is, uh, is monitoring and the management aspect. Uh, people will want to know who are using GPU, uh, what's the usage, uh, and, um, and how many people are using that, and the later on maybe even do a chargeback and reporting. So, so here is a very typical example. Uh, this is an application uh, created by IBM. Uh, for in the personalized medicine domain, uh, this is about uh, adverse drug uh, reaction application. Uh, over there, I use one type of uh, logistic regression uh, to identify whether any pair uh, of a drug have adverse effect for certain type of uh, patient. So, so you, what you can see here is uh, in the entire pipeline, um, you will get a fantastic speed up for the learning stage. Uh, we talk about 30 times faster. But the end to end speed up is only 4x. The 4x is, is not enough, right? Some people may think of 4x is fantastic, but on the other hand, if you think about the GPU environment, the GPU machine is, if it's GPU machine is four times more expensive, then the, the 4x speed up is not, not sufficient. To, to justify the investment on the coding, uh, implementation, and the managing uh, uh, a hardware environment. So, so what we need to do over there is to make sure we utilize both CPU and GPU all the time doing useful work. For example, uh, when you have um, uh, this um, uh, application doing CPU stage, over there the GPU is idle. The GPU can be utilized to serve other jobs, other applications. And similarly, for other stage as well. And the re uh, 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 opposite, opposite, when, when you have uh, GPU working, and the CPU can also be uh, used to, to utilize by other application job as well. Uh, right now, I'm going to hand over to uh, Junfeng. He's going to talk about the details okay, on the implementation. So I'm going to talk about the details, how we manage uh, and improve the results on the GPU and the CPU. Uh, in, in the technical point of view. So as my colleague uh, mentioned, so there's a basically two way to uh, manage the results in the uh, in the G uh, in this kind of heterogeneous environment. So while approaching we grouping the machine like uh, one having the one group of the host having the GPU, the other is only the CPU. And uh, most of the common way people does is if the application is asking for the GPU, we just throw that application to the GPU pool. So besides the previous example showing up, so this kind of uh, reserve approaching, so it's not really efficiently to drive the GPU workload. So if your workload is kind of only having a portion of the time that's really using the GPU, this uh, kind of reserve portion is uh, only keeping the uh, Improve, adding the idle time of the GPU. And uh, the other is another uh, uh, approaching that is the major approaching that we are going to is uh, enhance that from the scheduler tire. So we in, uh, we're making the enhancement for the Spark scheduler and the inspection, the whole dive tree to identify which uh, exactly task and which exactly part of the task is uh, need uh, specific GPU resources. And based on that resource consumption, we throw that to the particular resource group. And this is kind of uh, another beauty of the, this approaching. So most of the case that uh, uh, CPU and GPU uh, is kind of piled together. So for example, some of the location uh, of our customer, they having four, GP, four CPU is driving one GPU card. And so that, but they, they having like 32 core on each machine. So basically they having plenty of the CPU machine slots can be shared with other workloads. 
So in this way, we in this way we by identify the exactly what task re, uh, resource consumption we can uh, mostly efficiently to take utilize no matter on the single GPU and CPU complex uh, machine or in the crossing this kind of resource group. And then we going further to manipulate the whole execution deck to making that optimized based on this uh, specific resource, uh, resource allocation. And uh, then we based on those kinds of execution tree to generate this uh, resource allocation and execution plan uh, for the entire workload. So most of people familiar with like uh, the Spark concept of the RDD. So basically the Spark deck tree is uh, generate describing the de relationship or dependency of the data. So when we introduce the GPU here, we basically introduce some of the things like uh, uh, the deck tree is not just uh, describing the data, it's uh, describing also introduce some factor of the resource dependency. So what we does is uh, we introduce a new RDD inside this stack tree and which is talking about the GPU RDD which is describing the operation is uh, really binding with the uh, GPU operation. So that's the kind of uh, customize the whole deck tree into like uh, a GPU operation and some of that is a CPU operation. And by separate that uh, furthermore, we introduce like uh, we can manipulate that or generate the deck tree uh, based on the runtime to see which part is really should be carved out for the GPU machine. So the, the method is we can generate a lot, some of the addition of the shuffle dependency between the stage to making the, to further separation of the CPU operation and the GPU operation. So then uh, inside the scheduler, we investigation the whole backlog between the CPU and the GPU operation call. And then through based on that to asking for the resource manager what kind of demand we're asking we should allocate for this particular workload. And then the resource manager point of view is kind of offer the rule based engine to see uh, which is the best way to fulfill such kind of uh, resource allocation. So in the case of, uh, uh, so this will bring some of the benefit. For example, the, for the admin point of view, they doesn't even need to uh, understand too much about the job demo manager from the share point of view. So they describing the, each application, what kind of priority it has, and uh, what the capability they can guiding the GPU from the pool. And uh, then inside our schedule engine, so we can also do in further advanced scheduling, which called adaptive scheduling. So which based on the exactly result CPU backlog and GPU backlog, to convert the exact workload in same phase between the CPU and GPU. So most of the implementation that we have for the GPU, it's a kind, kind of can be two version. So each of the single task inside the cluster, is sometimes having the two copies. So when it's the one of the, that is the GPU version, when the CPU version, most of people does is so when we that for the GPU, then all the things run on GPU, right? But what about if the GPU is a kind of very limited resources and you're having plenty of the CPU curl there? So what we do here is we can switch in adaptively adjust that running based on the uh, backlog of task and the availability of the uh, results. For example, if you're having the uh, having a higher priority job that taking like 80% of the uh, GPU resources and the other uh, application that's demand the more GPU core, but uh, it's only can get a very limited one. But uh, the cluster having plenty of the CPU uh, core can be used. So the best strategy is we can still using those of the uh, CPU core to improve the whole throughput and utilization of the whole cluster between the GPU and the CPU. And uh, on the other hand, we speed up the whole uh, the both job of higher priority and lower priority. So inside of the uh, stage, so we basically can making the task can be adaptive uh, based on the resource availability. So percentage of the task could run in on the GPU and uh, we introduce some strategy to decide it if uh, we having big uh, backlog of the task in the same stage, we convert that to the making that run on the CPU phase. So there's a sum of the efficiency consideration for the same story, right? So the, uh, the concept of the, the essential way of the 
uh, improve of the utilization of the cluster thinking is uh, how to most, uh, mostly often using the both the CPU and the GPU resources. Uh, and if you want making the task of waiting for the best resources because uh, like the GPU really can speed up, right? And uh, from the other hand, if you somehow having the long time on the, on the CPU, if you need to throw some of the uh, task on the GPU availability results and to speed up the whole entire job throughput. And uh, the last thing, if you're having the trouble with the GPU, like the ECC core errors, and uh, there is some of strategy have degenerated, decided how to fail over crossing this different type of the machine, different type of the task. So here we introduce just the one of the describing one of the very uh, simple strategy. So if a people are familiar with the deferred scheduling in the methods uh, and spark a scheduler, so basically traditional deferred scheduling is uh, talking about the how to uh, de uh, schedule a task based on the data locality. So task is uh, should waiting for the best locality to execution, and if uh, the resource is not available for that particular uh, particular place, it's kind of we can decide if we wait a little bit for the better location. So with the GPU introduction, we basically introduce another factor called the uh, uh, resource-based uh, different scattering. So somehow the backlog task need to need to identify if we need to wait inside the scheduler for better GPU results, or we just uh, go high to taking the CPU results to run itself. So I'm going to show a little bit demo for our prototype and uh, how that's uh, 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 making the a single application share the GPU resources and how to share that uh, crossing different type of the application. So this is a kind of uh, implementation of the, if people are familiar with the Spark standard example, so we are taking the uh, one of the binary example inside the Spark, co uh, Spark package, uh, doing the machine, uh, doing the movie lens recommendation through the ALS, and uh, the, we take the data source from the uh, standard website and uh, uh, we want to show our approaching is kind of binary compatible with all the application. So all the, this kind of uh, advanced scheduling parts, it's hiding inside our engine. And the machine learning library parts that's uh, having the integration with the GPU, with, we're having the open source part on this website. Uh, that is our IBM colleague doing so. And uh, let's show a little demo here. So this is uh, our product called the Spark, uh, IBM conductor for Spark. And uh, we're having this kind of nice view to manage the whole clusters, metrics, and things like that based on the application. And then for the GPU uh, uh, supported, we're having the whole cluster management view. For example, if you show the whole host in the cluster, in this case, I got ho uh, four hosts in the in the cluster, and the first two are GPU uh, host. You can see it's can monitoring some of the important metrics. For example, like the. Can you increase a little bit? I'm sorry. In increase. Oh. oh. Increase. I'm sorry. Maybe I can. That's better. Okay. So it's uh, offer the important like the monitoring capability. For example, we offer like the GPU temperature monitoring and uh, the, the error code, ACC code, and uh, availability of the GPU memory and uh, the GPU utilization. It's uh, showing zero because that doesn't run anything right now. And uh, the other two hosts is the CPU host. You can see there's no GPU uh, cores on those hosts. And uh, we having the concept like a Spark instance group, which offer the multi-tendency of the Spark. Uh, and uh, within each of the instance group, we having one of the advanced master, which kind of having our this kind of advanced gathering capability inside it. So after we launching it, it's showing up how the the GUI is kind of uh, similar to the Spark master, but it's kind of enhanced. And uh, I'm not going to run the whole application because it take uh, times to show that. So I was just showing the existing stuff, uh, what we already run. So 
In this case, the mo uh, this MoA application is going to be uh, automatically getting some of the GPU from the cluster. So people actually can transparent uh, starting to run debug their application on pure CPU cluster, right? So after they throw this application into our cluster, it's uh, based on the scheduling capability or configuration policy, it's automatically can getting the game from the GPU parts. So here we highlight some of the job that's actually running both in GPU and CPU resources. And uh, if you look at some of the job inside it, uh, So it's uh, basically showing you some of the phase are basically the GPU. So maybe this one is more clear. Yeah. So we basically manipulate some of the stage. So in this case, we config the run, insert some of the suffer stage. So eventually, the, if uh, there's no enhancement, the basically the GPU and the CPU operation is mixed together in the same stage. So in this case, we want them some kinds that can run some different resource group. You can see some of the it's a GPU operation is separated from the DAC tree. And then you can see in this case, we basically separation the GPU job and CPU job into two different separate stage. And if you look at into the single of the GPU stage, and it's doing some adaptive scattering based on the availability of the resource. So you can see some of them is uh, scattering on this host of the GPU host cluster, and the other two, uh, the rest of the sum of tasks that's basically running on the CPU parts. And this is the same stage. And uh, we can show you the, uh, we're using the notebook can uh, evaluation some of the result uh, from the execution event log, and uh, it's basically Deep into the dig into the event log to showing up how that throughput going up in the both the C CPU stage and the GPU stage, right? So this is the same application that we does with the movie lens. And the manual speed up parts, it happens on the training parts. And uh, you can see before that and after that is pure CPU workload. And on the on the middle, this kind of the right line showing up the throughput of the GPU. And then there's a sum of the a blue line that's uh, a, a higher than the uh, than the than the right line that's showing up some of the the scatter decide to run some of the portion task on the on the GPU host because they're kind of having too high backlog there. And uh, we can using the same way to show up when we're having more than one application running together how the resource sharing looks like. So here we're showing the second application is basically having the higher priority to acquire the resources from the cluster. So basically when you see the second application running, so the first application basically having very limited GPU resource there. And uh, once the second uh, application finish, then the GPU utilization goes up to shifting to the first application to dynamically speed up the first one. So that's kind of the concept how we speed up things. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so thanks, Jinfeng, for the demo. So in in summary. Um, uh, there are a few things that we need to do. Uh, one is uh, the resource manager need to be GPU aware, need to understand the GPU resources. You know, GPU is different than G uh, CPU. You know, you have to think about uh, whether uh, it has high temperature, right, uh, or ECC error. And uh, the second part is uh, you need to be able to identify which part of uh, operation is on CPU and uh, which part is on GPU, and so that you can decouple the GPU operation from CPU part. Uh, the third is to make the, the DAG tree and the task scheduling uh, GPU aware uh, so that it can make a better decision. And then so that you can run and uh, optimize the Spark application on both uh, uh, CPU and the GPU cluster transparently. It's very important to utilize both the CPU and the GPU efficiently in order to get higher performance and also very good uh, TCO. 
there are some future work. Uh, we talk about the global uh, optimization. Uh, because we introduce a shuffle stage, we need to understand what's the cause for the shuffle stage. And also, uh, when you have uh, data locality for both the CPU, and this, um, CPU stage and the GPU stage, well, we need to uh, make sure uh, maybe we can optimize and collocate it together. We want to add a time dimension for multi-dimensional scheduling, and we want to optimize the entire directory. Uh, and also, the historical data will be very useful to, to optimize the future execution. Uh, a lot of uh, machine learning algorithms have a lot of iterations, and the past execution result will help to optimize the future execution. That will be all for our talk. Any question? We, ha we have time for like one question, because we're, we're over time here. So okay. I'll go straight to the front. I thank you for your presentation. Can you go back to the previous page? OK. One before this. Uh, I was just curious, uh, can you uh, clarify a little bit how you went about ident identifying what, which operation is a GPU operation in a Spark DAG? Tr uh, in a Spark DAG? So when I have a, sp a Spark job, I have a, I form a, a DAG, right? right. How, how exactly do you go about identifying which part of that right. is running on a GPU? Right, we, we, we introduce a uh, a, a GPU RDD, and uh, for all the operation on GPU RDD will be considered for a GPU operation. Does the user have to say that's a GPU RDD? Uh, right, a user can give a hint, uh, this is a GPU RDD. Okay. Yeah. Great, well, are you guys available for some questions if people want to uh, come okay, ask? All right, sure. thanks yeah. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.